Okay, well, I don't have the magazine cover to show you here, but I'm doing Wilson's Creek. Um, just finished buying it, obviously, if you're following these things. If you're not, well, such as. Um, so this is kind of, I want to look at it in a couple of ways. One, from the system itself. And in particular, from how the system moved from the old TSS system and how I feel about it. I feel like they've gotten the game more complex, the design more complex, but I think actually they cut the rules down a little bit, at least the basic rules. Well, eh, maybe not. 18 rule, oh uh, no. 17 pages of rules. I don't remember TSS's uh, rule book. It's probably around, right around the same rule. Um, they may have tightened it up a little bit. They got rid of some weird little things like artillery, uh, fire by prolong and stuff like that, that were minis rules that people didn't really use much anyhow, uh, that got translated over. Yeah, a little bit of realism perhaps lost. They also integrated things like the Brigade Combat Effectiveness Chart, although we didn't see that in this scenario. Um, so we can't talk too much about that. Uh, they added some other things that I think weren't in the original. Uh, the density adjustment chart up here, which unfortunately, I, any game I seem to blank that out and forget about it. But you know, I mean, if you've watched my uh, Great Battles of History, the SPQR stuff, um, you know that I often kind of leave things out and I catch myself, etc. And this is a game where that happens. Now, to me, I feel like the design of the system actually took a step back. Um, not in terms of simulation quality. This is just one of the few cases where I can say, oh, you know, I actually like the way it worked out better you know, under that kind of simpler... Um, design. Why? Well, because it doesn't make a bit of difference. And maybe this is a sign that I should go look at the uh, Simple Great Battles of History and see if I enjoy that more. I love Great Battles of History, but it may just be that I'm paying too much in terms of effort, fiddliness, and stuff like that to get essentially exactly the same results, which is what people have said. This, however, I feel a little less excited about for a number of reasons. One is, it ain't Gettysburg. <laughs> I mean, it really comes to that simple. Uh, the Great Battles of History series, or Great Battles of American Civil War, seems to have focused largely on the not-so-great battles, which is kind of the gem of the system, which is that you've got this, um, you know, reg regimental level uh, handling these smaller battles. It's very good for them. But you don't have that same excitement, right? I mean, you know, I could replay Gettysburg many, many times. This one, I've done it probably as many times as Gettysburg because of how long I've had the game. But it just doesn't thrill me as much, even with, you know, uh, the surprise attack and all the cool stuff in here. But that's one of the cool things about these smaller battles is you can pick a lot of them like this one that are really, really interesting in a way that the slower developing Gettysburg with all its, you know, uh, majesty almost, uh, it doesn't have. You know, Gettysburg develops into this huge set piece battle. This is a, a, a raid on an encampment that's not prepared for it and and certainly you see that in, in, in some of the bigger battles, too. But, uh, here I think I'm thinking in Tiedem in particular. But, uh, the whole, or no, actually Shiloh, uh, the whole of the, uh, looking at these smaller battles, it just, it doesn't thrill me as much. Now, maybe, again, I look at the ancients and I say, wow, you know, almost anything there kind of excites me. Uh, American Civil War, 
is kind of less interesting in general in terms of the tactics, in terms of how the uh, different branches all integrate. When it comes down to it, it's a bunch of infantrymen lining up and shooting each other, and then charging up in and giving it with bayonets. Until you get to the fortifications, and then it becomes more like a World War I slugfest. Um, but it's really, really, you know, less interesting to, in terms of, you know, looking at the mobile aspects, looking at, at the integration of different arms and stuff like that, than what comes later when you hit the World War II side, even though I don't like World War II that much, and what comes earlier when you're looking at the Napoleonics and everything before that, where cavalry is really an effective arm. Here, in the Civil War stuff, cavalry becomes a less effective arm. Now, the artillery is... I almost feel too potent in this. It feels almost Napoleonic in this system and in all the TSS systems in terms of being able to kind of drag it forward really close and shoot. Um, it's one of the things I like about the gamers' systems is they give a real advantage to the defensive aspects of artillery. Okay, looking at some of the other differences again, just to jump off the line. The fire table is a little different. I think it's a little less bloody than TSS's original, but it's not as bad as Stonewall's chart uh, by any means. And Well, no, it's probably close to the original TSS, maybe a little tweaked. But one of the biggies is the artillery is being ha handled on its own row. Uh, I think it has about the same effect as the TSS original in terms of limiting the effectiveness of artillery. But it may be easier to understand, to say, oh yeah, artillery versus infantry, I use the grape shot row. No matter what distance I'm at, it need not actually be grape shot, but here's the deal that table doesn't work as well. Now, here's the thing. I'm not sure that I buy that artillery close-up to infantry should suffer that grape shot penalty, which is to say, if you're actually using grape shot, you're probably wreaking havoc on the infantry. So, I actually think the original TSS handled that more, more properly. Um, Let's see, some of the other stuff in here. Uh, artillery is handled in more detail with the crews and being able to kill the crew off rather than take the guns out of existence. I think that's a, a, a level of detail that didn't really help. It means more counters and more stacking and more fiddling with things. Uh, Stonewall introduced that idea to the system, and it's one that I think the system can do fine without. Uh, but it is an added little bit of detail. Um, they took away some aspects, like the, the lying down while firing, which I'm not sure how realistic that really is. Uh, if you're advancing, you know, if you advance your, your breech loaders forward, maybe they deserve a little bit of defensive uh, advantage because they don't have to stand up fully to fire, but maybe that's going a little extreme. A column shift is a fairly heavy, uh, heavy penalty there, and you know I, I, I'll blow either way on that. But to me, one of the bigger things is that kind of gets in the way is the more detailed map uh, representation with the actual. Uh, slopes, etc., handled in full color. I find it harder to visualize what's going on in the game when I've got this kind of muddled map. I think it's a beautiful, I think it's a beautiful representation of the information that it's trying to convey. The problem is it's not as simple as the old TSS system, you know, had been. Uh, there are Without the color coding, with just, you know, the really two colors on the map, or three, with some blue, um, I felt like it was clear what the terrain actually looked like. Here, there's more detail on the terrain, but it all kind of blurs for me with that color. And I, actually, the garish gamers maps 
um, I think represent it a little better than this more subtle and more attractive map does. Uh, but that's again personal opinion here. Um, I, I, I could definitely see people feeling comfortable with either side or with any of the three really. Overall though, uh, you know, this is this would probably rate a 7 for me, but for some of the errors in the game. Uh, Countermix problems, and I ended up botching them beyond uh, what they were already botched as. Uh, just a, a few minor screw-ups that help make this a little less pleasant. Also, the extra counters for removing the uh, for for removing the horses from the panicked cavalry, and then for this particular battle outside the system, I mean the the cab is also as are the botching. But for this particular battle, I feel like the balance is just shot. Yeah, I'm not sure it's unrealistic, but I've never seen the Union win, and this is definitely a game where I think if you were a competitive player, you would want to maybe bid the battle. But if you do that, there's a danger here, which is that that necessity for the Union to attack as hard as they do, to try to grab everything, you know, both terrain locations and or the supply wagons. They've got a lot of things they can grab that are worth points. But if they aren't pressured enough maybe you won't see the historical battle turn out. So, in some senses, I think it is appropriate to give it the points like this, but if you're playing a competitive game of it, you probably do have to bid it. Uh, usually balance isn't an issue for me, and I don't know how much it is really here. It's just another gripe that I kind of pile on to a game that <sighs> pleased me a lot when I first saw it, but over the years, I've found better things, and, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a reworking of this battle would be of interest to me. I know there's someone, uh, another company put out uh, a Wilson's Creek uh, scenario, so I'd be kind of curious to see how, how, how much better that does. But then there's also the, look, I've got something covering the battle. It's a pretty solid game. Um, I can't expect something else to take it to that other level. And that's kind of the feeling I have um, with almost all these battles. None of them stand out so high that a good detailed uh, simulation like this really requires replacement for me, except for Gettysburg. And I'd feel sort of the same way about most of the Napoleonic battles. If I could cover most of them with a good detailed tactical simulation, uh, I'd be pretty happy. Unfortunately, I have almost none. Uh, <laughs> in part because I'm kind of worried Ney versus Wellington never pleased me, but I finally picked up uh, Wellington's victory as well. But I've got kind of this... Uh, I, I enjoy the gamers uh, Brigade series games on the Napoleonic Wars, but very few of them came out. I'm kind of looking, I know uh, Grognard uh, Simulations ha is putting out some. They're kind of pricey, uh, and the components are a little bland looking, but uh, I'm kind of leaning towards looking at them. And what do you care about Napoleonics when I'm here talking about some little battle out in, in the Civil War? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, for me, this is really a matter of, I want this battle, I want most of the kind of interesting battles, and I'm happy enough with this, but it may not be the best solution out there. I just haven't gotten a chance to look at another one, and I'm not really interested in having another one in my collection. Cheers!